Good morning from Piraeus Port. We have disembarked from the Azamara onward, and we're now on the Anak Lines, Venezuela's probably their largest ferry headed for Crete up on the top deck just now sometime a little bit later on today when we're underway we'll do a tour of the inside of the Anak Lines ferry but for right now we're just looking at Crete we're waiting for them to load on all the other passengers and all the cars still down below. Not quite sure how long it's going to take. Right now it's 9.30 and the scheduled departure is 10 o'clock. So I think we're going to get off a little bit late. And of course we're meeting our friends who are coming to pick us up. So hopefully we're not delayed too long. Let's start down and just take a look at the uh, inbound traffic. Another line of cars. Looks like either these are cars getting on our ferry or all the ferries. I would suspect all, but you never know. Down below, the foot traffic waiting to get on as well. Either a few of our officers, or maybe officers of the Greek Navy, are down there headed to Crete. Popular way to get around. Nice church here in Piraeus. And the hilltop on the opposite side. Some of those antennas are familiar to people who have been to Athens. As Athens is in this far distance that direction. A large built-up area over there where we'll be in just three or four more days when we come back from Rhythmno. We're now at the stern of the Venezuelos. see what we've got still coming on to the ship here we're still backing on a few of the big trucks so it looks like we're going to be a little late in getting away to Kania but they've made pretty good progress loading them on we were some of the first people to get on after they disembarked the other passengers this morning so we've been on for a little while managed to uh, clean up a little bit, rest up a little bit. Incidentally, from one side of Piraeus Port to the other, a very long distance. If you are getting off a cruise ship at Piraeus and getting onto a ferry, chances are you don't want to walk it. Uh, if we had left without the baggage that we had and went for a scenic walk, it would have taken us the better part of an hour. As it was, let me get past this device here. One of the bilge fans or something like that. If we had, uh, if we had had to drag our luggage around, we'd have probably died doing it. Uh, it's easily a mile and a half walk, I would say, maybe two kilometers or more uh, from one side. And we weren't even at the end of the cruise area. So if you need to get from the end of the cruise port. Uh, up to even the metro station and you've got even a little bit of luggage uh, take a taxi they're not cheap but it's well well worth it just a little bit of the skyline of Piraeus we're back on the port side of the vessel and we're just looking around enjoying a beautiful morning in Athens Greece Piraeus On every deck, there's a little bit of lounge and leisure space. Even the dogs enjoy it. A lot of people brought their pets along.
there's even a disco. Got a lot of good viewpoints on the ferry to make the trip that much more enjoyable. And just to answer the question of what do you do with your pets while you're on an eight or nine hour ferry trip, some of them are in the kennels down here. This poor fella isn't with his owner. We have the dog kennel and the dog space. Hi, puppy. Yakutavi. So we were lucky enough to run into another English-speaking passenger of the Anaclines Venezuelas. This is Gail, my travel companion for this entire trip, and she's still smiling, although we were sort of downgraded from accommodations. We've had people waiting on us hand and foot for 11 days. Are you still happy on the ferry? I'm really happy. Well, we've got about nine more hours to go, so we'll see if you're still happy. We did get a cabin on the inside, which was uh, probably more expensive than baggage storage, but uh, definitely well worth it. Just looking out over the Port of Piraeus. We're now about as far forward as a passenger can go and as high up. Just by the bridge here. This is their uh, harbor pilot viewing area here for docking. On this side, we're on the port side of the vessel at the moment. And again, just looking at the line of cars and the other ferries here in Piraeus. Now, I don't know if you can make out all the sparkle in the immediate distance. And we'll try to zoom in on it best we can. But uh, all that sparkle over there and that kind of funny looking building up on a hill, that's Athens and that's the Acropolis. The Philippopos Hill is probably obscured. No, it isn't. It's actually to the right in this perspective. So you can see the Philippopos Hill, you can see the Acropolis, and you can see all of Athens if you squint from Piraeus. And that's why they, in the ancient days, had this is their port, and that was their high ground, particularly Philippopos Hill was the high ground, seeing the invading fleets coming at Athens and anything else that threatened it from the sea. We'll have a lot more of Athens in the next few days. But now, we're off to Crete. And just one hour and 15 minutes uh, behind schedule, we're now pulling out of Perea's port. We are underway for Crete on the Venezuelas. Gonna see if we can't get a last look at the Onward and whatever other cruise ships are in port. I neglected to mention uh, that a ship that was with us over in Turkey uh, pulled in just after we did, early this morning. That little uh, cruise ship whose name I've already forgotten, but we'll take another look at her, the Gemini. We'll take another, another look also at the Gemini in the cruise port. Captain just closed curtain to the bridge, looking aft. That church over there with the blue dome is on a central square that I've been through in Piraeus a few times headed to cruises. And that I believe is the cruise terminal in Piraeus. We're gonna see them all as we pull out on the Anaclines Ferry. There's the Gemini. And a last look at the Onward. 
I think all her passengers have now disembarked. And she's got a tanker alongside, it looks like, bunkering fuel. And Sea Cloud 2 is also there. That was also with us in Turkey. So three ships we've seen before in prior episodes of Travel with Chip. All parked up next to one another. Let's see if anybody's in the last slip. Great views up here by the bridge. A little hazy today, but a very pretty day. Nonetheless. Goodbye, Azamara onward. Took us to a lot of great places. Did its job as a taxi cab for 11 days. taking on more passengers later on today I'm sure headed somewhere else unlike a lot of cruise ships it does not run a regular timetable uh, it's making its way through the Mediterranean now I think its next calls are in Italy cruise terminal C appears to be empty this morning left out of there most recently on the Norwegian Jade and a prior trip on a celestial ship the Crystal uh, we left out of I think where the Gemini is right now in the far distance we've still got the mainland of Greece but we'll probably pass some islands here in a little while, so we'll come back then. As we continue to pull away, Salamina in the distance, along with Corinth in the southernmost part of the Greek mainland, in the far distance, you can probably just make out the mountains. The island of Aegina, coming up off the starboard bow. view is great this morning. It's a little hazy. A lot of shipping traffic out in the Saronic Gulf. A lot to see up here. We're at the starboard side just behind the bridge. and bar area and I think it's not the only one on the Venezuelas cafe is set up and there's an upstairs seating area as well so let's just take the stairs up and have a look second bar up there as well. One thing is for sure, in the heat of summer, they keep this ship refrigerated. I wouldn't even just say air conditioned. It is cool in here, which is very, very nice because we were standing out in the heat and humidity for close to an hour. Oh, well, we're on deck eight of the Anik Lines Ferry. And just going around the lobby, I couldn't help but notice the chapel. Very pretty little chapel beyond the ferry. Evidently on Sundays they hold services here, so very, very nice. 
Oh, we'll go back up on deck. It's a very large ferry. It has a lot of cabins, a lot of deck space. People make their own accommodations all throughout the halls. Coming up to a restaurant area here, which we'll go through in a little while. But the deck is the place to be. And off the stern on starboard side, the island of Aegina. As well as the southernmost peninsula of the mainland. In addition to the bar food at the disco and a few of the other locations, there's also a full service restaurant which unfortunately was closed today, we'll walk by it in a little while, but also a self service restaurant and they have a number of specials. Uh, we got Greek salad and a large plate of spaghetti with a mikos, enough to split, and it was just over 16 euros, so a very good deal. And of course, we can't beat the view. So, while it's not the onward, it's still pretty darn good. What's the verdict? Not too bad. Not too bad. Greek salad looks great. Being Greece, we have an olive oil station as well as a place to put on oregano. So, my kind of place. So we're in the stern right now. And we're gonna head out of the restaurant and take a little bit of a tour of deck nine of the Attic Ferry. Just looked at a map and we're just going by Serifos, though it's probably too far in the distance to make it out. Let's take a look. We are definitely too far away to make it out. I can make out a tanker out there and maybe just a little something in the haze, but that's it. So Deck 9 has bars and restaurants.
Most of the deck passengers just make use of the lounges and restaurants. The bar has snacks and light fare. Very comfortable, nice television. And then stair lobby here. One of the main points to go up and down here, deck nine, elevator. And if we were going into international waters, the duty-free store, which because we're staying in Greece is closed today. The Annick Ferry also has a formal dining room, formal restaurant. Unfortunately closed today, probably only open at night or on multi-day voyages such as to Italy. And another little store, just not open today. Another elevator lobby stairwell. And then a large lounge forward. With a bar and light fare offered. Very comfortable lounges throughout the ship. Aft on decks 10 and 11 is the disco that we saw a little bit earlier when we first got on and that also has a snack bar. Uh, it was before I came through any of these areas that uh, initially it looked like that might be the only thing open but that just didn't make any sense for the sheer number of people who are on this vessel. Pastries and chips, mythos on tap, perfect for a ferry voyage. Back out into the hall. Here is just an example of the mess you can make in a four-person um, inside cabin on the Annick Lines Ferry. And the great thing about it is that you don't have to store your baggage anywhere or babysit it for any period of time. A big closet allows you to hide a lot of it here. There's a little vanity and then beds. We have space for a computer up top and a bed that both of us can actually use down below. Now, the radio doesn't work but the power does so that's fine. And there is a bathroom with a toilet and a shower so we have a full bath. Uh, cost for all this luxury was, well let's see, the round trip ticket to Kania just on deck was, uh, I want to say, right on about 170 something euros with the discount on the return trip. And then this morning we upgraded to a cabin uh, for an additional 62 euros. So for 62 euros to have somewhere to go and to know that your stuff is being made off with by somebody, because there are a lot of people here, and not having to sit by it the entire trip. Uh, Depends on your budget, but I would say totally worth it. Well, it's currently quarter of seven, or 15 minutes uh, late already, and we haven't quite landed, but that's to be expected having left an hour and 15 minutes late today. Uh, but to see land is exciting, and Kania is in the far distance behind that initial piece of land there, that initial point of mountains and the taller mountains behind it. It's going to be a little bit chaotic getting off of the ferry. And I've got a friend who's probably going to be waiting by the time I've got there. So we may not do anything else until rhythm. Well, we're coming into Kania and we've got to get it together, we've got to get the luggage down and all that. A friend of mine's waiting for me and we've got to drive to his house, so I want to be one of the first people off the ferry if I'm able to, and we've got lunch. So, uh, 
I know your questions probably. Was it a good experience? And yes, it was. I love ships. I love being out on the water. Uh, is it a lot longer than taking an airplane, say going from Athens to Crete? It's, it is a longer time. Uh, it is a little less expensive, particularly depending on how you do it. But uh, it's totally worth it. It's a, it's, a, it's a memorable part of a vacation and it's something you can do again and again and enjoy every time. So, uh, as we come into Kanya, uh, I just wanted to say thanks for watching Travel with Chip. Please subscribe and share. Uh, appreciate all your support. And uh, we'll be in Rhythmno for the next couple of days. It may rain Sunday, so we're going to try to get out to the beach, maybe the Venetian Fortress, uh, and some other things in Rhythmno tomorrow. Again, thanks so much.